Hi students, today our topic of discussion is an expression for apparent depth or normal shift when light travels from a denser medium into a rarer medium. Now, you take a glass tumbler and put a lemon inside it. Look at the level of the lemon from vertically upwards. Then you pour some water into the beaker or the tumbler and view from the top. You can see the elevated position of the lemon or even you can try with the coin. Why this is elevated? It looks elevated. That is because of this normal shift. So apparent depth depends on this normal shift. This is because the light travels from a denser medium into a rarer medium. The apparent position of the object okay we are uh, observing so when you go to swimming pools and look at uh, the bottom of the swimming pool from the top uh, you will feel as if uh, the floor of the swimming pool is uh, very closer to you this is also based on this normal shift so we feel the apparent depth of the swimming pool is uh, lesser than its uh, normal and real depth okay now we get into the topic so this is a tank containing water let us assume water and above this level xy above the surface of water the medium is air so you know much better that water is a comparatively denser medium and air is a rarer medium i have placed a point object o at the bottom of the tank so o is the point object and it is located at the bottom of the tank and you can see this is the eye of the viewing person a person is viewing from the top so our eye is receiving uh, the light coming out from the object okay so for the person who is observing from the top of this uh, water tank the image of this object o appears here that is i i is uh, the image uh, of the object okay so it appears closer to the eye so the distance of the point object okay the distance of the point object to the water level xy this is the real depth this is the real depth of the tank and the distance from the image to the top surface of the water is called the apparent depth and that is denoted as d dash so what is a small d represent here small d represent what it is the real depth of the water inside this tank and what is a d dash it is the apparent depth that means the distance from the image to the top surface of the water so we need an expression for d dash in terms of d Okay, before deriving itself, can you understand that D dash is smaller than D? Yes, of course. D dash must be smaller than the real depth D. Understand? Okay, now the same picture, one, one side, you see here, the light ray actually traveling from the point object up to the surface of water, that is up to the point B. It travels straight along the path OB. So inside water, the light is traveling along which path means uh, it is OB. After which uh, it has to come into the air medium, which is the rarer medium. So it will bend uh, away from the normal. Okay. So when the light uh, is coming out from the point B, it travels a path BC away from the normal. It deviates away from the normal. Similarly, another incident ray, which is traveling uh, in the direction O to A inside water. Okay, when it comes out, it travels along the direction A, E. So, they are all deviating. So, this is due to refraction, okay, from a denser medium into a rarer medium. Suppose if you produce the two refractor rays back, produce, produce by daughter lines, so that uh, these two rays will meet uh, at the point O. If you produce uh, these two rays B, C and A, E back, they, they have to meet at the point O. Is it not? So, this uh, one side of this tank is redrawn here, okay, in an enlarged manner. 
so you can very clearly see that uh, o is uh, the point object lying at the bottom of the water tank and i is uh, the image which is formed above the bottom understand okay then uh, you see the incident ray ob this is a uh, ob which is the incident ray inside the denser medium water and uh, when it comes into the rarer medium air it is uh, deviating it is uh, deviating uh, along bc okay along bc now i produce this ray bc in the backward direction by dotted line so where it uh, meets uh, the line od the normal okay where it meets the normal is uh, at point i so i is the image of the object and the distance of this uh, image i to the point d on the surface uh, that is called as uh, d dash that is the uh, apparent depth we need expression for this d dash and uh, o to d this is the real depth uh, d then the ray incident ray ob is making an angle with the normal that is called as angle of incidence i angle of incidence i and uh, another normal is drawn at the point uh, b at this point b the incident ray okay which traveled along ob is coming out uh, slightly deviated away from the normal so the angle made by the refracted ray refracted ray bc with this normal is called a small r that is angle of refraction so this is angle of incidence i this is angle of refraction r suppose if you produce this ray bc in the backward direction by dotted lines uh, it will reach uh, the normal at the point i so this corresponding angle b i d this angle must also be equal to r these two angles are corresponding angles understand that so now we are going to derive an expression for the apparent depth d dash in terms of the real depth d and the refractive index of the denser medium so the two media which we have uh, considered water is the first medium and uh, it is having a refractive index n1 and uh, air is the second medium whose refractive index is n2 now shall we start the derivation students fine now from snell's law snell's law of uh, refraction we have studied that uh, sin of uh, the angle of incidence uh, divided by sin of uh, the angle of refraction is equal to the refractive index of the second medium n2 divided by the refractive index of the first medium the same uh, snell's law in a product form i am going to write product form that is n1 into sin i must be equal to n2 into sin of r okay now i is the angle of incidence and r is the angle of refraction when you are viewing any object above above the water surface the small area of the i only is receiving the image therefore the actual value of these two angles i and r must be very small the angle of incidence and refraction must be very small okay so i will take uh, since uh, angle i and uh, r okay they are very small okay they are very small this uh, sin of uh, i is very nearly equal to the tangent value of this i and uh, sin value of r is also nearly equal to tan of uh, r so in this uh, equation number 1 instead of sin i and sin r i can also substitute tan i and tan r so equation 1 now becomes uh, n1 into tan of uh, i is uh, equal to n2 into tan of uh, angle r so this is equation 2 okay now very simple we are going to substitute the value of tan i and tan r from the diagram now you see here this a uh, uh, triangle right angle triangle dbo there is one right angle triangle dbo and here is the angle of incidence so in this triangle in uh, the right angle triangle dbo 
O. What is the tan of tan of the angle of incidence I? So this is tan of any angle is equal to what opposite side by adjacent side. So this is an opposite side which is the side opposite to this angle I divided by the adjacent side. So which side is opposite to this angle I in the triangle is DB. Is it not? It is DB. And which side is the adjacent side? Adjacent side is DO. So this is DB divided by DO. Similarly, you look at another right angle, the triangle DBI. Okay. So it is also right angle that D only. So in the right angle triangle DBI. So this is a D B I. What is the tangent value of this angle R? I am going to find out the tan R. You tell me now what is the tan R? This is also equal to what opposite side. Okay, opposite side divided by adjacent side. So which side is opposite to this angle R again D B only. So same D B. This is equal to D B divided by Adjacent side is what? Uh, DI. So this is uh, DI. Now I am going to substitute uh, for tan I is equal to DB by DO and uh, tan R is equal to DB by DI. In which equation? In equation 2. So equation 2 takes a new form. Understand that? So in this equation 2 if I write uh, N1 into tan of i so db by okay this is a db divided by do is equal to right hand side is what n2 into db by di so this is a db divided by di so the factor db is getting cancelled on both sides okay or i will write or this N1, N1 divided by DO must be equal to N2 divided by DI. So this is another equation number 3 we have got. 3. Okay. Now you see here the distance okay, D to O. The distance D to O, this vertical distance is equal to small d and that is the real depth. Is it not real depth? So I am going to write N1 divided by small d. Right hand side is, you see, d dash. What is it? d dash? The distance d to i. So instead of the distance d to i, I am going to substitute what? d dash, which is the apparent depth. So this is equal to N2 divided by d dash. Now we have taken the two different media. The first medium is water, is it not? Water is the refractive index is 1.33, 4 by 3. Understand? So, in general, if you don't remember the value, I can take uh, for water. Okay, for water, the refractive index is taken as N1 is equal to N. That is 1.33 or some value. Similarly, for air, okay, for air, I take uh, N2 is equal to 1. N2 is equal to 1. I am going to substitute in the above equation. So instead of N1, what shall we substitute is N. So the above equation becomes N divided by D. Okay, N divided by D is equal to 1 divided by D dash. 1 divided by D dash. So this implies D dash is equal to D dash is equal to D by N. D by N. So this is uh, one very important equation number 4. So from this we come to know that uh, the apparent depth, okay, the apparent uh, depth uh, is uh, equal to real depth, okay, real depth uh, divided by the refractive index, uh, refractive index of uh, first medium, okay, refractive index of the first medium. This is the actual Derivation. We are supposed to derive. In the examination, they ask you to derive an expression for the apparent depth in a denser medium. Okay. So, this is the expression we have got.
Okay, in the same expression now, suppose if they ask you to derive an expression for the normal shift, they are slightly different, that's all. Understand what is the normal shift by how much is the object raised? By how much is the object raised from its actual position? That means you have to find the distance between the object and the image. That only is called the normal shift. Okay, students. So this normal shift, normal shift is equal to d minus d dash. Is it not d minus d dash? So we want to find d minus d dash is equal to d minus instead of d dash what shall I substitute you tell me shall I substitute d by n okay instead of d dash I am going to substitute d by n okay so which is common factor here so we can take the common factor r this is now equal to okay normal shift normal shift is now equal to d into 1 minus 1 by n Understand? So, this is the expression for the normal shift. Now, based on this, in the competitive exams, the NEET and JE entrance and all, what type of questions they are asking? No. Suppose, if a point source of light, an LED bulb is kept inside a water tank at point O, a light, when it is switched on, the light is coming out, is it not? Light emitted by the source is coming out. So, when a viewer is uh, seeing from the top, uh, he will see a circular patch of light. Imagine, a circular patch of light. Find the area of the circular patch of light. Such questions will be asked in the board examination as well as in the competitive examination. I hope you must have understood well. Fine.